Hi, everyone. I did a yard sale today and I was sitting out in the sun with my sunglasses on and I sunburned myself. So I didn't know that I sunburned myself. Oh, to the well. Anyway, let's talk about Grown and Gospel. Grown and Gospel, I think this is episode... I think this is episode five. Um... I guess I can look it up, but <clears throat> I think it's episode five. Yeah, because there's six episodes of, um, there are six episodes in this show. And someone asked Carlos King, why only six episodes? And he said that this is a standard in We TV for it to be a six episode show. I listened to Nikki interview on Carlos King. And I thought it was useful to kind of get an understanding about um kind of like her position she did not want to tell us what her husband went to jail for but he's still in jail and he's out and he is trying to appeal his case um she did tell us that she her husband is like i think eight years i think eight years her junior which isn't terrible. So when she's talking about robbing the crate, when she's talking about being um, a Kruger, I was like, I think you gotta be, I think there has to be a wider spread. But um, that's not my business. Uh, I will say there's, let's, the episode five starts off with Brie, Tasha, and Nikki talking. So they're at the salon getting their nails done. I guess that's not a salon. They're at the nail shop. And they're recapping the issue that took place. Tasha was like, look, as soon as he said, don't talk about, it. she needs to bring down her tone. She's like, I started to black out and I saw myself about to hit this man. So I had to leave exit. That's a fair assumption because you're not going to tell me to shut up or to lower your tone. I mean, I don't even think she was speaking that high for him to even warrant to even make that kind of comment. I thought that was rude. Um, they have not spoken uh, at all. And there's not much of Elijah that we see this um, episode. Um, Brie is talking about how she has a showcase coming and Brie is, they're encouraging her to invite her father to the showcase, which I think is a um, an interesting point. There is, a, 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 um, they do talk a bit, who, 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 who says this? Oh, Shayna. Shayna and Brie get together to have like this video, um, to make a video with their, to make a video for their father because Nikki encourages Brie to make a video to invite your father I'm none of this makes sense to me why do we need a video do you to invite your father does this make sense to you but okay cool I guess it's better than a text you can't pick up the phone and then leave a voicemail and if he doesn't do a voicemail then do a text if he doesn't respond to the text then do a video I can understand that, but I didn't. We didn't get all that kind of information, so whatever. So she makes a video. The video looks even more impersonal. So that makes me even question even more. Why do we need a video again? So, um, uh, I do think I did write down in my notes somewhere. Who did I write in my? Where did I write in my notes? Uh, about, I think it was Tosh, at Tasha's birthday party, which was a worship service. And they were commenting that we, Brie wanted the father and the husband to come to the showcase. And I was just, I think that was Nikki 
saying something. Nikki and Bree and and Shayna saying that. And I was just thinking, wait. Your husband may not got me there? I okay. So when Bree talked to Carlos in an interview, I assumed that things were kind of cool with her husband not really being there but her husband doesn't isn't okay with her having gone to Detroit which seems to be strange to me that you would go to Detroit right you would go to Detroit And you and your husband are, and you would go to Detroit, have an apartment or whatever. I know that he didn't want to film on the show, but it didn't mean that he, to me, it didn't mean that he didn't have to, that he, it seems like there should have been an understanding that you're going to be on the show and you're going to be far away. Right. So it seems like there was a, in my mind, that there would have been an understanding that, okay, I'm not going to be on the show. You can be on the show. You can go to Detroit. And I'm cool with that. So I'm assuming. And so this is where I'm, I think Brie has a breakdown with Jay. See, last, last episode with y'all, I was like, I don't understand why we're having this horrible, um, why uh, Elijah chastises her for being late. Because I thought it was rude. It was unnecessary. It's ridiculous. Y'all just hanging out. However, I did think that Brie was, was irresponsible for at least not sending a text to say, hey, I'm going, I'm running behind, I'm I'm still at work, whatever, whatever. It was at that moment that Elijah chastised her and said, Well, what if this was a business thing? Right. And then she said, I would be there on time. Well, your Jay has been sitting there for two hours and you walk in talking about, I'm sorry. And then you start crying. I'm going to be honest. Like for a while, I was kind of like, I'm getting, I put in my notes, getting tired of Brie crying. Like Brie can't not be, I, I think it's important to have emotions and to have these moments, but you simultaneously, you cannot always be the victim. So we need to figure this out. I do like Jay for his pep talk. I feel, and I also put in the notion that Jay invited Brie to church and I thought that was a really important moment. And then it made me pause and step back like, wait a second, y'all singing gospel and y'all ain't going to church? So the fact that Brie's been here this whole entire time and she hasn't been to church, it's like, I don't know. I mean, I guess possibly, but Going to church physically, especially if I'm supposed to be singing gospel, I would think that that's an important component because I'm connecting spiritually because then I may be not singing. I don't know. I just, what am I knowing? But I also can see why Brie had this whole breakdown talking about I'm not, maybe I'm not strong enough. Maybe I'm not this. Maybe I'm not that girl. Nobody got this kind of time to pour that much into you every single session, every single moment, every single, you got this. Like this whole episode, actually this whole entire show is a pep talk to Brie. You can do this, it's possible. You can do this, the, you got this, it's possible, you can. And I'm like, my Lord, Brie. There's got to be a point that you got to do some and I some pouring into yourself. I was like, how did you get through law school? Like, how did you make it this far with no confidence? I don't get this at all. 
And and then I began to start thinking about oh also now the husband if the husband is not supportive of you doing this and then you have daddy issues and you don't have a therapist oh I can see where you do feel all alone in this space um and friends aren't going to be friends are not going to hit the spot when you've made some vows to somebody and he ain't and he ain't present um but a mom should hit the spot right where's your brother your brother was in episode one what, what, what's up with the brother um let's get back to elijah elijah goes to the barbershop side note i am in love with the fact that they put the name of the shops and stuff at the bottom because I think that's a really cool thing because you're getting out advertisement for these places back to regular programming Elijah and Jay are talking and Elijah doesn't fully apologize but he at least acknowledges that this is not how you speak to someone that's your friend and then it's also not how you speak to someone's sister that you intend for him to work with you. So a part of me felt like, okay, he had to do this sit down because he's producing your project. But Jay is like, look, you need to be humble. Be humble. Yeah. And he needs to apologize and have a good gift. Um, Tasha and Nikki go work out. I love the whole working out while singing because it definitely being on stage for what an hour, two hours, moving around, you got to get that vocal training going. I guess even though this is not R&B where you're dancing, but I mean, being able to do it night after night, standing up near this focal point working out while singing is good good for you Nikki's like I need to work out because my husband's gonna get out of jail whenever that is and she wants to do the do a bazillion trillion times Tasha is talking about she wants to be Jay's priority and I instantly put in my notes I wonder if she's paying him. And then we get down to the sit down and at lunch, at dinner with all the family and she confronts him like, I'm going to do this with Marvin Wayans. Winans. Winans. Mario Winans. I got the name right. And I thought... It made sense for me, one reason why. And she made a good point that she wants to not just have a gospel component, but she wanted to be more, um, she wanted to be diversified in music. And Mario Winans does have dib dabs in a lot. And I will say that that is very true. Mario Winans took a huge hit. Um, he He's he's done a bit of a bit. But I will say that when he, it was big news because he comes from such a huge family that is in gospel, like he's gospel royalty for sure, right? Mario Winans is gospel legend. And so when he came out, I think he did a song with Diddy, correct me if I'm wrong. And it was a big hoopla because people were like, wait a second. You mean Cece and B.B. Winans' nephew is doing R&B? It's a big thing. So it is a kind of interesting thing. Now, over time, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, Cece Winans did a song with... um, She wasn't in the video, 
but she absolutely did a song, um, Count On Me, Do Thick and Thin with um, Whitney Houston and the Waiting to Excel soundtrack. So, um, yeah. Anyhow, and it's funny to me because CC made a was speaking somewhere and she was talking about how Whitney Houston asked her to be in a music video with her during Every Woman. I'm every woman. It's all in me. And people got mad at CC saying, uh, saying that she would not do the video because of the lyrics saying, I can put a spell on you. <laughs> and and how it's fascinating listening to people saying why would she think that that's so she thinks that that is a devilish thing and did da. and I was like look I'm gonna need y'all to chill y'all may not understand the 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 um, religiosity of it all but you can't tell people because of their faith how ridiculous they possibly sound because this is how they were raised this is cc and bb wines they are mature in their time cc wines is much more conservative than bb i'm gonna tell you that there are some songs especially in the 2000s 2000 age that uh, she was having a lot more spiritual songs and even some of the songs that they sung the, in their day they were cutting edge they're not cutting edge anymore but in their day they were pushing the envelope so I don't know I just think that people don't realize that it, people's beliefs um let it go it's their royalty she didn't want to be in the music video and they were raised to be this way um anywho so she threatens jay and jay's like i never heard of him i laughed i chuckled and his jay's response to me was huh hilarious jay's response i mean they did all these other stories right so dad was saying how much you stole my car and how upset he was on the bmw on 18 inch rooms and i was like and he's she's like you're materialistic oh that's funny okay but anyway tasha jay's like look people want a hookup and here's the thing He's like, yeah, I'll make time. She's, and the, the, this is the conversation that she even had with Nikki. He makes time for everybody else over me. If they give him money, then he prior prioritizes them over me. Huh. Doesn't the man need to pay his bills? Can't pay his bills on a hookup. And so he said that I... We'll be there for you. I also respond to deposits, highs, and offering. I said, you know what, Jay? She may have thought that was a joke, but that was legit real. She would want to get paid for her work. Why shouldn't you get paid for your work just because we're siblings? I'm not a big fan of taking advantage of people. And even when people want to give me the hookup, I prefer for people not to give me a hookup. And if they do give me a hookup, it needs to be small because I don't want you to sacrifice for me getting a hookup. I don't want that. Um... Uh, I love, okay, let me say something about the church for a second. I love how they are showcasing that this church is small and I thought that that's nice. It's a, it's, it's 
not a storefront, but it's adjacent. And I think that's nice that it, to let people know that everybody, just because you may have an extremely popular following, an extremely popular name, doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to these mega churches. And most churches are not mega churches. Um, also, Jay does his little interlude where he's talking about being in the church and you in church all day. And I've mentioned that multiple times before on this channel on being in church, you're in church Monday, to, Monday, Wednesday, Friday is prayer service. Uh, Tuesday is Bible study. Uh, Thursday is YPWW. Friday is evening service. Saturday is choir rehearsal. Sunday is uh, Sunday school. Uh, church, you may have afternoon service. And then you have a evening something. So people occupied your time with church. And so he was talking about how people, you know, usually have their first kiss in church. They have usually a room that's designated and people get a hookup at church. And I was just like, that is not my testimony. That did not happen to me. I will not tell anybody's business on this channel. But we shall do know some people who absolutely this was happening to. We were doing some whispering. But, um... You know, I will say that in the midst of all of these other, um, the downfalls of church, I've had some really interesting memories and some fun memories to think about. Moving on. Um, so we're at Tasha's birthday party and she invites Shayna and Brie to sing with her. Brie talking about, I want all that confidence that Tasha has. Brie. I love you. I really, really do. I don't know what to tell you because I'm just getting tired of it. I'm going to need you to just figure this out. Figure it out. I know that we're all insecure. We all get nervous. I get that. But this is a bit much. Anywho, Elijah decides to come in. People are doing praise and worship service. And comes in with this elaborate box. Clearly, it's shoes. Glass box. And puts it at the bottom of the, um, the altar. Let me pause for before we get off. And, and we see how people are like... I know this fool didn't. That's what they think. Let me pause and say, for those of you who do not go to church um, or don't have much of a history in the church, one of the ways that people wanted to acknowledge that the minister was doing a really good thing or the singer was doing a really good thing was they'd come and put money on at the foot of the church. So at the foot of the altar, they would put it at the foot of the altar, not during altar call, not during, we're talking about something completely different than the offering. And sometimes there's a double offering, right? Not that time. This is, Putting the people would come and put money at the foot of someone because they they feel moved to do so. 
I can under so I think this is where he's coming from with this principal idea. I can understand where it could be distracting. Um, but this is of a tradition um, that does take place. I don't see this happening as much in churches as I did while growing up. And I will be honest, when I first, and it was seemed to be like kind of not throughout my entire childhood years, but when it did start happening, a lot and it became more of a popular thing I was like what are they doing because it was seemed to be a strange concept that you know people would just walk up and throw money and I was like I'm and then it also seems kind of strange that you'd have to have somebody sitting up at the altar eventually coming along picking up money right and then you'd also have to come with this concept of what if you want change? So eventually people don't do this because it did kind of get out of hand. Um, um, but like I said, it's it's supposed to be like a gift to the person. So what he did was not necessarily... Uh, a diss to her but I can understand where people felt that it was probably inappropriate because they haven't been speaking so with that being said our last episode is next week I I did not listen to Shayna with Carlos King I'm gonna be honest I did not have the patience to listen to another interview so I will by the next time and I think I will do my review by I don't know who the last I'm assuming that he has to put Jay on the last one because Jay's the only one who hasn't been interviewed and he's clearly the fan favorite Jay is by far the fan favorite the rest of them are okay but Jay is by far the fan favorite so I'm assuming that he's the dude who's going to be in the last one. And I actually would like to hear him because he's clever. He's funny. He's he's like his dad, actually. Charming. So with that being said, um, I will see you all next week. Today's Saturday. Hopefully I'll be able to put it up on Friday because why not? Bye. <laughs>